are you all doing? I hope you're all doing well. My channel has always been about trying things out, trying new things. However, sometimes I tend to stick to my comfort zone. I have made two coloring book videos in the past and both I transferred from the coloring book onto a piece of wood so I could paint it because paint is my main medium. Because at the end of the day, I'm like, there are people that can do coloring book pages way better than I can because I don't tend to use pencils or markers all of that much until today the reverse coloring book i have never seen anything like this before and i'm very very excited to try it out for the first time it, this is an ingenious idea it's already colored in so your job is to outline everything that you see so i always like to read my youtube comments and one of the comments that i received was hey you should try out the new left-handed coloring book but i found this which i'm thinking that comment was referring to my theory is i went back to youtube later that day and i saw my sweet friend sarah from so craftastic had uploaded a video with this coloring book that she had found and i believe that comment maybe had seen her video that day and that's why they left the comment to me i don't know but whatever the theory is i'm gonna link sarah's video down in the description because she did a phenomenal job but yeah for now i cannot wait to get started and let's go so, this book is called the reverse coloring book by kendra norton the book has the colors you draw the lines essentially it's a book that's already colored in that you then make the outlines for yourself, which I feel almost lends itself to have more creative freedom than a normal coloring book. Some of these pieces are really pretty. Like obviously you can tell they're flowers and then other pieces are kind of more like this. Some pieces are a little bit more like this where it, it's kind of hard to know what you want to do with it, but you can figure something out. Then you have some like this. I think this will be a lot of fun to do. And I mix, well, it looks like a jellyfish, but it's upside down. Huh. Welcome to my debut art book. I created this book after realizing I wanted to improve my drawing skills and also to combine those skills with painting, one of my true loves. That's so cool. So if you do get one of these, you can follow her on Kendra Norton Art. I can honestly say I have never seen anything like this before. I'm not sure if this is the first of its kind. If it's not, I feel like this is going to be something that's heavily trending after this book. So I have my container here of fine liner markers. You can pretty much use anything you want. You don't even have to use black markers. You could easily use lots of different colors. But I think for now, on this page, I'm gonna stick to some black markers. What is this one? Oh, I don't like that one, no. I have one pen in particular that is my absolute favorite pen to use for everything. And maybe that's why it's not in here, because I use it. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. Wait, there it is. Yes. So this is my favorite pen. It's by a zebra, or as you Americans like to call it, zebra. I don't know what the rest says, and I'm not cool enough to speak Japanese right now. But I'm just really excited. I think I am going to, instead of just starting from the middle, I'm gonna start from page number one. If you'd like to see me complete this entire book, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I'll leave the video a thumbs up, because that always helps out. But yeah, I'm gonna start off with the first page, the lovely bouquet here. I have no clue what to do. I probably will find my own style of this after a few attempts at it. That looks like a teddy bear. Like those are his ears, that's his nose, and there's his eyeballs. <laughs> that was a little wobbly. Okay, I've done about 3% of this so far. I'm gonna zoom in and show you. I can't unsee that being a bear, to be honest. But other than that, I feel like this is probably gonna be the weirdest flower bouquet that I've ever made. Actually, it's the first flower bouquet that I've ever made because I've never done one before. But hopefully it'll turn out okay. I'm pretty much just adding like a million swirls. Ooh, I'm getting fancy now. I feel like this could look like a hot mess when it's done. But for now, I'm just having fun with it. And you know what? Some people often have a stick up their butt with how art should be and how it should look and what it should be like. But you know what? Art is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. They make coloring books for adults, for goodness sake. People aren't expecting perfection here. The world is an anxiety and stress producing place. Stuff like this exists so people can just kind of quieten their minds a little bit. So before those people that go, 
looks like it's all loads of squiggles. Yes. Yes, it is. It's supposed to be. It's art. It doesn't have to make sense. I'm very excited because my Hungry Root box is here. So I signed up for Hungry Root back, I think it was in December. <laughs> Kept seeing ads for it everywhere. Really excited about this because today Hungry Root is kindly sponsoring this video and it's nothing to do with me signing up for them a few weeks ago. This is just completely fluke. And basically they send you groceries so you don't have to go and do it yourself. And what I really liked about it is that it allowed me to set my preferences. You can take this really cool personalized quiz to say the things that you like and don't like and tolerances things that you just don't want so dairy gluten i'm not supposed to have those so i was like don't send me anything with dairy or gluten everything is literally tailored to you hungry root sends you personalized weekly deliveries filled with healthy groceries along with 10 minute recipes you can edit your weekly deliveries and choose exactly what you'd like to receive I'll let hungry root choose for you for me i have them covering breakfast three times a week a few healthy snacks and dinner and lunch for most days me and my boyfriend always look forward to making these meals together or for each other and trying new and easy recipes we're both busy people and these are just always so simple simple and fast. Hungry Root has a huge variety of options for all diets and less food is wasted and way less trips to the grocery stores. Plus they have over 2,000 recipes. So if you'd like to try it out for yourself, the first 100 people to use my code ChloeRose40 will get 40% off your first grocery order with Hungry Root. Use the link in the show notes or go to HungryRoot.com and use code ChloeRose40 to get 40% off. And thank you so much to Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. Some squiggly wins squiggles it's almost more fun already having the color on here because i don't have to think about oh that color needs to be there because i don't have much choice in the matter do i because it's already there freaking love this pen it's the best pen that's ever existed i swear i've used it for literally years it's amazing doing this makes me feel like falling asleep and i don't mean that in an insulting way i mean like it's actually really relaxing to the point it makes me want to go to sleep <laughs> I'm curious though how this paper is gonna hold up on the other side. You know what? I've just realized not only is it not leaking through to the other side, but the pages are perforated so you can actually take them out of the book. That's amazing. That's such a good idea. I feel like there aren't enough coloring books that do that. I mean, I don't think I want to take it out of the book, but if you did and you wanted to frame it, then you absolutely can. It's a very cheap way to decorate your walls. I'm not sure why I keep turning the blue parts into small little balls. But I just see blue and I'm like, oh, that would look good with little balls on it. I don't know why. Initially, it was kind of like a floral thing. And now it just kind of looks like what I'd imagine caviar to look like. So you can see the part that I've done so far compared to the part that's not done. You really can do literally anything you can think of. Like, it's there's so much freedom here. It's crazy. <laughs> This looks like a duck with a beehive, and now I kind of want to roll with it. Cool. It's a little duck with a beehive. If you can't see it, that's fine. I can. <laughs> I'm not very steady. Every line I do is wonky. So if I do a wonky line, I pretty much just try to make it look like it was deliberate when it wasn't. Like that started out as a straight line. <laughs> Let's do like a sprig. Is that what you call it? I don't know flowers, I just kill them. So I know I've been doing this for a grand total of about five minutes. I will say that to me, what will make a huge difference is if you use a pen with a flexible tip. That will make all the difference in your pieces because instead of just having one line thickness, which I mean, that might be your vibe, you might like that. But you get way more flexibility if you use a nib that you can kind of do this with. It just kind of gives you all the difference in your lines. Again, that might not be what you like to do, but I feel like everything looks better with varied line weight. So my tip for today, I'm actually just going to do some random like swells for no reason. I mean, there's already a lot going on here, so I don't need to, but I feel like it just kind of adds to it a bit more. And this is definitely not looking like a bouquet of flowers anymore. It's kind of looking like some sort of weird underwater kind of coral type thing, but I'm actually okay with it because I feel like it looks quite unique.
You know what, you could even use highlighter on this. I feel like that would take it to the next level if you highlighted certain parts. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna kind of keep going with the actual fine liner itself. But I feel like if you really wanted to spice it up a little bit, you could add some white pen. Okay, so this is it. It's now complete. It's kind of a bit of a jumble of all sorts of things, but I'm actually really, really happy and like how it turned out. And it was also really fun to try something new. So you go from something like this to then something that's filled in like this, which I think is really nice. I think that it turned out pretty unique. I think the duck with a beehive is probably my favorite one. What I really like about this so far is that the pages are terrible so you can actually tear it out and frame it if you wanted to or just pull it out for whatever reason or even if you just didn't want to draw in a book in the first place you can just tear it out and do it on its own but I really like that there's not a coloring page on every single side but yeah I think we're gonna do another one now. I kind of am tempted to just kind of like close my eyes and just open one and just go that one. Oh maybe not that one. I don't I'm undecided indecided undecided i feel like this one would take you forever there's so many circles i mean if you just outline them i guess it's not a big deal but you could do little fruits mm, this one i want to know what you see on this page let me know i'm not going to tell you what i see stop the video and leave a comment down below telling me what you particularly see on this page It looks like fish, so I'm gonna, yeah, this one. I've never drawn a goldfish before, so I really don't know if their fins look like that, but we're gonna go with it anyway. I'm kind of trying to look at pictures of goldfish, but also this is in a certain shape, so I kind of can only go based on what the shape is. This one I think I'm gonna do a bit more loose than the previous one, because it's a little bit more out there, and it's gonna be kind of hard to do anything that's more together. So this one's gonna have to be a little bit looser, I think. Is this what coral looks like? Or am I just doing something that looks like the snorks? Do some like seaweed kind of thing. These can be bubbles too. Okay, I feel like this one already has a bit of a goldfish face, but he looks a bit like he's hiding in something so maybe i could do this mm, what could he be hiding in maybe a little cave this could be a cave that he's hiding in these poor goldfish are very messed up mm, okay that looks strange but that's fine This one's a tough one. This is not as easy as the other one. I'm still trying to figure out how I can make this work. I mean, there doesn't have to be any logic to it whatsoever, which is what I like, but still, I want it to look semi like it's supposed to be something. <laughs> I think I'm gonna fill in some of these light spots and just sort of make it sort of weeds or seaweeds, but there's no color, they're kind of like just shadowed. We could do just a bunch of like shadowed seaweed or whatever else grows under the water, I suppose. These are kind of funny looking goldfish because they have several different types of goldfish. They have the big fluffy goldfish that are kind of chubby and adorable. Then they have like the tiny little flat looking goldfish, which aren't quite as cute. So I think we'll just do like a combination of, of, of those. Just kind of doing them semi abstract too. So the water I'm trying to represent with some sort of movement of lines. This was supposed to be a cave initially, but now it's just water. So that makes no sense, I've just realized. That's fine. I don't really know what to make these brown spots though. So maybe I'll just make them lines, really thin lines. It's gonna be just like, I don't know, dirty water or something. Maybe like fish poop in strings. I used to have like six fish and they always had strings of poop attached to them. It was so gross. Every time I'd look in there, there'd always be one that just forever would have poop attached to it. And I don't know why it was always pooping all the time. I guess it had a healthy uh, bowel, but it kept pooping all the time. coming together. It looks kind of fun. The fish poop is looking pretty uh, fish poopy. Drawing lines is actually way more fun than colouring in. 
I will I will say that. I'm having so much more fun with this than a regular coloring book. It just kind of makes you think a little bit more and it makes you think outside the box. And it also has almost less pressure on you. I'm trying to draw a goldfish and instead of trying to make it look perfect or coloring it in perfect, I'm having to make the goldfish with the current constraints of the shape of the paint that's already on it. So basically you're trying to make something, but with what you've been given. So you don't feel the pressure to have to kind of make it perfect. And I really, really like that. I may actually know what was some of this orange. I may just kind of add the streaks so it looks like goldfish fins. Honestly, you know what you could have done with this page too? You could have made a bunch of foxes. Like the orange could have been foxes, this could have been the sky, this could have been the forest. So really there was a lot of options. I just saw the goldfish and figured I would run with it. Also that now, that looks like a Simpsons profile. Like that looks like the profile of one of the Simpsons. Like the scientist guy, that's what that looks like. <laughs> I almost feel like I should fill in the white gaps too. I don't know. I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like I wanna start doing this myself now. Like getting a piece of paper and just shoving loads of blobs of color on it and then making art from it. That would be so fun. My biggest issue is I kind of don't have the ideas and stuff like this is giving me the ideas that I want to keep making pieces. And it, this is just so fun. <laughs> I think because the colour normally comes after, it makes your pieces a lot more together and kind of cohesive, whereas this really gives you a lot of creative freedom and I am all for it. I think this is just amazing and I think she has another book, so when I'm done with this one, I'm definitely going to have to get a second one. It looks a bit scary, to be honest. Back with a theme now of uh, the blue and the bubbles and the circles. <laughs> Just like tons of bubbles. Or maybe it's caviar again, in which case this is a very difficult thing to make when I'm making fish and caviar. We'll just call it fish eggs instead of caviar. It makes it less crazy that way. Oh, this is so fun. No, seriously though, I almost want to make artwork. I want to make some pieces of artwork with a ton of colors like this and then force myself to make drawings out of it because I have not done that before. Usually when you start off with the lines and then you color after, you're kind of stuck in with what you're making. This I feel is so good if you are dealing with sort of art block or you're just wanting to do something creative without having to think too much. This is by far so much better than any coloring book that I've ever done. It just gives me so much creative freedom and I feel like everyone is always gonna make a different piece, which is what's really cool about it. You have the same colors, but you're always gonna make something different to somebody else. And obviously with coloring books, you can use different colors and stuff, but the actual piece is still going to be the same. But I don't know, this is just really fun. I'm curious what Sarah did. I actually haven't seen her full video yet. I feel like hers looks way more like a decent, fun, funky bouquet. Mine just looks like fruit. This is, I really love this page and I much prefer this one to what I did before. Okay, I'm just finishing up now. I'm just adding a few extra little squiggles here. And um, this one's definitely not as finished as the other one. I think there's a lot more open gaps, but it doesn't all have to be kind of highlighted or have lines over it just because there's a color there. I think sometimes you can go a little bit over the top, overboard with things. And this kind of leaves you with a little bit of option so that you can either leave it really, really detailed if you want, or you can leave some parts detailed and some parts a little looser. That's definitely what I'm doing with this one because I feel like it looks nice as is and I just don't want to overdo it. Okay, so this is how it turned out. I absolutely love this one. I think it was a lot of fun to not only do, but try to figure out what I wanted where, how I was going to utilize the colors. I did leave this one a little looser, so there are some parts that I didn't sort of highlight or put lines around, but I love this little fish. 
Look at him. Look at the little fish. He's so cute. <laughs> They're not. They're not. He's all right, though. I'm happy with that one. Overall, though, this was so much fun to do. I absolutely love this idea. I am absolutely, I'm obsessed already. I genuinely, I love this so much. Thank you.